Hello everyone, Paolo here again and today's book number 11 out of my 52 book challenge wherein I plan to read one book a week or 52 books in a span of one year. And today I'm very very excited to share with you to this week's book of choice which is Marketing 5.0 by Philip Kotler. For those of you who aren't familiar who Philip Kotler is, he's a very famous marketing expert and he came up with this book Marketing 5.0 to really share with everyone Given all of the technological advancements, how can this impact marketing in general, the field of marketing, and how can we as marketers best leverage on this new technology in further improving our marketing performance? So as usual, uh, I have five key takeaways for the book. Uh, let's start with the technology for humanity. So my first key takeaway is technology for humanity. Before diving into it, how the book defines technology for humanity as the application of human mimicking technology to create, communicate, and enhance value across the customer journey. So it's really about understanding the entire customer journey from them being exposed to your brand, your product, all the way to becoming fans, advocates of your product, right? So here he gives a few key examples on how technology can further enhance the marketing experience or the marketing uh, campaign, right? So the first one is predicting market performance. In the past, it was very hard to do this because we were the technology in the olden times were very limited. But now we could really create a personalized experience. We could drill down to the uh, demographic level of a customer psychograph, even is his or her behavioral patterns. So because of this, we are able to personalize the experience. For example, with the use of sensors, pixels, we are able to gather more information uh, to our customers. So for example, if you notice uh, in Facebook, when you search a product online or you talk about it perhaps, uh, haven't you noticed that whenever you log into your Facebook news feed, you're suddenly shown or exposed to brands about the recent product that you searched, right? So I'm sure a lot of you uh, have experienced that. That's because of the word called, uh, the technology called Pixel, wherein, think of it as a tracker, wherein all of your digital activities, um, they're able to monitor and, and tag you and put you in a certain classification of a person who is interested in that kind of field or that kind of product, right? Because of this, marketers are be better able to serve you with relevant content uh, that they feel would interest you, right? The third one is really incre increasing productivity by outsourcing low-level tasks. So because of this, rather than having to manually tally, tally you know results and whatnot we could we could use automation we could use technology to get rid of um, the administrative task and focus on higher level think higher levels of thinking and fast lastly is technology can really enhance the marketing uh, your marketing campaigns by speeding up execution and real-time validation I'd like to highlight the real-time validation so in the past, uh, it was very costly to do a campaign, right? We were very limited to radio, TV, uh, print. And because of this, it was heavily skewed towards the big corporations who had huge marketing budgets, right? But now, given the age of technology, it, it shifts the power to, uh, you know, SMEs, for example. So rather than have a very large budget and splurge it in all of these uh, large investments like TV ads and so on and so forth. It allows these smaller companies to do uh, smaller scale campaigns uh, at, with minimal risk and then increment and grow as, as the business grows. They, they, they increase their investment as the business grows. So one example is for, uh, you know, I'm also a CEO of one of our companies wherein we sell supplements health supplements so rather than hire uh, an expensive influencer or a brand ambassador what we decided to do is leverage on social media wherein we created a, a short video campaign that, that aimed to increase awareness on the benefits of probiotic so it's really about 
having that awareness campaign and blasting it through social media and with the help of you know ads manager we are able to filter down to what kind of customers that we feel would best be interested in our product so we filtered to the to the age group we filtered to uh, the gender even to their purchase behaviors in the past and if they are interested or follow any pages pertaining to health supplements so because of this uh, because of this detailed hyper uh, specified attributes of a person we're able to show the right advertisement the right product at the right time to the right person so these are you know there's a huge huge advantage for technology and there's a huge opportunity for marketers to leverage on all of these so the second key takeaway is what they call the next tech so if you heard about artificial intelligence facial recognition and so on and so forth these technologies have already been available for quite some time but because of these six key drivers we've we are we're, we're experiencing and yet to experience a further uh, acceleration of all of these uh, new age technology so i'll share with you the six key drivers that are enabling the next tech so the first one is mobile very important here because uh, if you notice more and more people are able to access the internet through their handheld device in the past it was very costly for them to uh, buy a laptop a tablet or even in remote areas but now even here in the Philippines, right, the mobile penetration is even higher than our population. So given the, the increase in mobile penetration, a lot of people are able to access the internet, access um, resources online wherever or whenever they want, right? So that's the one key driver. More and more people have access to a smart handheld device or mobile. The second one is 5G internet. So because of this 5G internet, it empowers a new age of technology wherein we could use different uh, internet of things, for example, or sensors that feed information to the cloud or the internet. And based on these informations fed, we are able to learn from it through machine learning uh, without getting to technicalities. I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. For example, uh, the 5G internet enabled internet of things so for example if you have a smartwatch or a fitbit or any uh, health band that you attach to your uh, wrist right because of this being able to connect to the internet your device being able to connect to the internet um, we are able to read your uh, vital statistics so one great ad there was done by apple wherein um, you know he was here i think a, a biker was riding uh you know a mountain trail and he was wearing an apple watch and then he suddenly fell because of this hard fall it immediately alerted you know all of his uh contacts or emergency contacts that something may have happened so because of this you know it was able to trigger the 5g internet allowed uh you know devices to be connected to the internet and there are a lot of things that can uh that that we can take pro, pro you know we could learn from the data we could take preventive measures like for example if you notice that you have a high heart rate it can easily trigger an automatic 911 ambulance to arrive in your house so that's the second one 5g internet the third one is big data so again because more and more people are connected to the internet there is huge huge millions and millions of data available but being able to you know sort all of those data into actionable um, insights right uh, it would empower the next gen technology the fourth one is open source software so you heard the likes of you know the companies of elon musk uh, microsoft amazon so because of this open source technology uh, it's shared information across uh, you know it's available information available tech for everyone so basically because of open source software it empowers it empowers artificial intelligence or machine learning so machine learning is basically uh, a machine you know a, a pc for example uh, is able to learn from the data it is uh, it consumes or is fed right so the more data it is fed 
the smarter it can become, the more um, accurate the forecast can be. So one, one example there is, there's in Microsoft, I work for Microsoft, there's this facial recognition app, right? So by simply, uh, you know, putting your, placing your face in front of a cam, it can determine what age you're likely, uh, your likely age, right? First try, it may be way off, but as it sees more faces, it's, it, started, it starts to learn uh, from past experiences and can project, right? Better make predictions in terms of what age you are actually, you, you actually are, right? So again, uh, because of this open source software, we're able to feed these machines with data to improve their accuracy. The last two is computing power and cloud computing. So computing power is because of this new technology, it requires a lot of data storage, um, compute power, it requires a lot of memory, RAM, and so on and so forth, right? In the past, you had to, it was very costly for you to do that. But now, uh, you know, with, with cloud providers like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Alibaba, and so on, rather than having to buy a physical server which costs uh, millions perhaps, and in terms of buying the hardware and then you need to invest in maintenance and so on and so forth. Now, you're simply able to rent those services. So with that, uh, in case you have a website, for example, uh, in case that there's you ex you're expecting Cyber Monday, for example, rather than buy an entire uh, rack or server, you simply pay what you uh, can consume or what you use, actual use, right? So if you're expecting a surge in sales, for example, in Cyber Monday, uh, with the risk, in the past, there was a huge risk that your servers would go down because of the heavy influx of traffic. Now, you're able to scale up, meaning uh, you're able to increase your compute power, you're able to increase your storage, and because of this, uh, you're able to, you know, uh, on demand, you're able to adjust your compute power depending on your actual requirements. So lastly, again, those are the six key drivers of next gen tech that really empower the next uh, wave of technology. So here, rather than focus on, give, given that I mentioned the key six drivers, I'll give an example. So for example, because of AI, we are able to create customized content. I gave an example earlier wherein if you viewed the product, for example, in the past, the machine is able to understand, ah, okay, this person eh, likes these kinds of products. Or if you're a fan of Netflix or Spotify, right? Um, based on your past movie views or your past listens, the app is able to better understand uh, your preferences and recommend something that would be more relevant to you. And even fraud detection. So for example, of all of these banks, rather than doing manual credit investigations, they're able to look at your past transaction histories across multiple channels and see the likelihood of you to default. And the rates can be adjusted depending on your credit risk, right? The second one is NLP. So it's natural language uh, processing, right? So replicate human interactions. So basically, for example, rather than have a uh, agent talk to you on the phone, all of the frequently asked questions can be passed on to a chatbot, wherein there's automated responses, based on keywords, there's a flagged response for that. The third one is sensored tech. So I think we're gonna see it in the next 10 years, driverless cars. So we're gonna, see, I, I foresee you know, driverless cars to become something uh, normal in the next few years, just as if you were riding an elevator, right? Where you, rather than uh, you know drive your own car, you simply book a ca cab and then ride towards your destination. The fourth one is IoT, Internet of Things. So I mentioned that about smart homes. So if you have an Alexa, Google Home, uh, simply uh, you know dictating the task you want to be done, like turn on light, turn off uh, TV, the machine is able to do that. And lastly, uh, blockchain. So it's a decentralized uh, way of uh, of validating, right? Uh, decentralized way of validating the ledgers. So one example there is cryptocurrencies. So you heard a lot about 
Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on and so forth. But the technology behind that is blockchain. I think it's more than simply cryptocurrencies, but blockchain empowers un un unlocks a lot of other fields wherein it's very hard for a person to manipulate data because, again, uh, it leverages on the masses uh, and use, uses, you know, um, yeah, so bl blockchain. The last one is takeaway number three, the new customer experience. So because of these new technologies, uh, what would it look like from a customer perspective? What is the new customer experience? So one of the examples given there was web rooming versus show rooming. So I think a lot of us here are guilty, right? We're in web rooming is whenever we want the product, we first search online, right? First search online about it and then we go to the store to make the actual purchase because some of us still want to see and feel the product, right? But we did all of our research uh, prior to buying uh, before, right? And next one is showrooming. So it's the opposite. We're in, we look for a product in store, we feel it, try it on, and then we make a virtual purchase. That's why if you notice, uh, a lot of the big box retailers like Walmart and so on have also ramped up their um, their e-commerce business, mainly because it's it's really a balance of both. Nothing would, over, you know, I really think that there's still going to be the need for uh, retail shops, uh, depending maybe on the product, right? So if, you're, if you want to survive in the new normal, you must have a balance of both, you know, maybe have a good physical presence and as well as a good virtual presence. And what I liked about this new customer experience is he also highlighted the five A's, which is awareness, appeal, ask, act, and advocacy. So again, it's really about understanding the entire customer journey. So it's first about it's first starts uh, from being aware. So again, how can you as a marketer be involved in all touch points of a customer experience? So the first one from researching to after sales and becoming fans, right? So the first one is uh, how can you make your brand uh, how can you make people be aware of your product, right? How can you expose your brand to these people? The second one is if they are familiar or have heard your brand, how can you appeal or cat catch their interest uh, to make them actually want to know more about your product? Once you move them down the funnel, this is where you spark their interest, they want to know more. Hence, the third A, which is ask. So this is where they're starting to gain interest, they're starting to do their own research, to know more about your product. The fourth one is when they answer all of their uh, questions, you, you caught their interest, they want to buy, this is where they act and actually make the purchase. But again, a lot of marketers end here. After they purchase, unfortunately, they don't make any follow-ups. But again, the goal is also to have repeat customers, to have that spread uh, word of mouth. So again, it's about building an advocacy, which is the fifth A. And how can you really build your fan base, your advocates, your ambassadors? So from these uh, five A's, you're able to walk through the journey on the entire customer experience. So as a brand, as a marketer, how can you actually um, be present in all stages? And how can you help move the customer uh, through the funnel? So again, it's it's uh, the fourth key hi highlight is it's really a hybrid approach between humans and machines. It's not purely machines replacing humans, but I think that all of the um, you know all of the tasks that are low value will be eventually automated by machines, which makes it a point wherein there will come a point wherein humans will need to increase their skill set uh, to higher order thinking. So the 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 downside of machines is they lack empathy, right? So machines, perhaps, there's there's going to be a hybrid or there's going to be a mix between human and machine interaction, wherein machines perhaps can crunch the data, simplify all of the data gathering, insights. Then humans are able to be creative. Based on these data, they're able to insert divergent thinking or creativity and insert empathy, right, in that transaction. So example, 
uh, one example is product recommendations once again uh, based on your past history uh, what based on your past history we're able to offer you more relevant solutions more relevant products so again these are some examples of reimagining the customer experience the second one is VR to experience a product so again you're not limited to the physical uh, retail shops some companies are starting to use virtual reality for companies uh, for customers to experience um, their products right so if you wear goggles if you see those um, you know it's an immersive experience and the last two is dynamic pricing so if you noticed it can be possible with technology like if there are um, booking if you're booking flights right if there's a lot of people who are looking for that specific fly, flight, you notice that pricing may have changed. Or even your Grab or your Uber, if you notice if it's peak hours or crunch time or, you know, a lot of people are going home trying to book, there's a surge price, what they call, right? And lastly, is mass customization. So the great thing about uh, technology is we're able to customize on a per level, on a per person level. So I'll discuss that in our fourth key takeaway. So again, uh, that's the new customer experience. The last one is comparing the traditional segmentation versus the segment to one. So I'll first define the traditional segmentation. So in marketing class, in any marketing person you talk to, uh, it's ingrained in their mind, right, on how to properly create your target segment. So the usual tools used is you can segment them by geo geography. So based on their uh, address, where they live, and so on. Second one is uh, based on demographics, right? Based on their age, their ethnicity, perhaps, their um, nationality, and so on and so forth, right? The third one is psychographic. So you can base it on their beliefs, values, what are they interested in, and motivations in life, right? And lastly is behavioral. So this is based on their past experience. Like for example, if you're a frequent flyer, uh, made ex purchases of this product in the past, you can predict, right? Uh, what would the likely, uh, what would the likely action of that person will take? But again, this is the traditional segmentation, wherein you're trying to bucket them into um, people who are most likely fit that category, right? But the great thing about segment to one is with technology, with pixels, for example, you're able to pin down to a specific person, right? Like this person visited this page. Um, for example, one example is if you're running an e-commerce shop, right? You'll be able to identify who amongst your visitors, website visitors, have actually made the purchase or have perhaps filled in their information but and added to cart but did not um, follow through with the purchase because of this you're able to filter specifically who that person is and how you can perhaps convince or move them through the marketing funnel like for example if they added a, a product but it's only add to cart you can actually send them an email or trigger an email that would give them a coupon perhaps just to push them over the edge to make the purchase again so what's great about um, marketing with technology is you're able yes you still use the traditional segmentation but you're able to filter it down to a very specific um, criteria and and based on that criteria you could think of different strategies on how you could move them down further the funnel so one example here is target huh? the target retail outlet right we're in in the u.s uh, there's this family we're in they were sent mail in the past this was before technology they were sent uh, mail wherein it was offering them coupon for babies so what's interesting is you know the dad was quite curious how come they kept receiving mail about coupon for babies and no one is expecting right after uh, weeks and weeks of receiving the same communication, the dad finally asked his daughter if his daughter is pregnant and she 
you know, burst down in tears and cried and so on and so forth. So again, uh, because of uh, Target, this is one example of how you could use tech, uh, how you could use, uh, you know, profiling to better cater to your customers to increase their um, their affinity towards your brand by offering them relevant content, relevant offers. Uh, it's personalized marketing, right? And the last key takeaway is the WWW era. So it's not the World Wide Web, right? But more on the whatever, whenever, wherever era. We're in the next gen tech can help personalize marketing wherein we can provide the right product to the right customer in the right moment and in the right place, right? So if you notice, you know, the Grab app. For those of you who are using Grab, you can see that from hailing a cab, from booking a delivery for your documents, booking groceries, and even booking a hotel, uh, or you know, it's an all-in-one app. So we are we live in an era wherein we want everything's on everything on demand. So as a marketer, how can you actually um, cater to the on-demand culture that we currently have, right? So making sure that your, your product is relevant, your product is available uh, to the right customer at the right place at the right time. So with that, those are my five key takeaways from technology to humanity to the WWW era. So with that, uh, that summarizes this week's book. It's book number 11, Marketing 5.0. If you love the summary, you'll also love all the other book summaries I've uh I've done. So if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please visit youtube.com, search Paolo Balinas, and click the subscribe button. And you know, you could watch all the previous episodes. So again, this is book number 11. I look forward to book number 12 next week. Stay tuned and see you again next Sunday. Salamat and hope you like and subscribe. Thank you.